Check the description for the following discount codes. Today is the third and final video in the series of three videos sponsored by LG and their range of 2021 OLED C1 gaming focused televisions. So these are self-lit OLED panels, 4K, HDMI 2.1, so that's 4K at 120 hertz with HDR. We've also got FreeSync, G-Sync, and VRR for your console variable refresh rate support as well. When you use game optimizer mode, there is super low latency input somewhere between six and 10 milliseconds, and there is a one millisecond response time. They also have all your usual features you would expect on a modern high-end smart TV, and there's even a Twitch streaming service should you wanna watch your favorite Twitch streamer sat in your sim rig through free screens in this case. Um, so today, I wanted to go do something a little bit different. LG said to me, can you make the ultimate sim sort of racing setup? And I said, well, that's a little bit difficult to do the ultimate sim racing setup because there's so many things to take into account. But when it comes to displays, we can't really argue that 120 Hertz OLED HDR panels with all those other features are pretty ultimate. But I thought to myself, what can I do for this final video in the series? And one of the things I took away from my visit to uh, Immersive Display UK the other week, which was where they, I was in that sim racing pod, that 360 degree sphere, was that being enclosed and feeling like you're actually in a car or a cabin or a cockpit made a big difference to the level of immersion you feel. There's no distractions from white walls in the background, windows, shelving, whatever else might be around your room. All, I was thinking to myself, all, all you'll see is you literally, well, all I could see was just, you know, the, the screens and as a result, the world around me. Again, a little bit like being in VR, but, but not quite. Um, so I thought, why not make a headlining to go over the top of these three screens, just like you would find in a real car. So, you know, when you get in your car in real life, you get in, you duck down, you sit down, and you've got a headline and you've got flaps to keep the sun out of your eyes, you've got an interior light, you close the doors and you're in there. And I thought that would be really quite cool to do something similar here because what you've got effectively, your center screen is like your windscreen and these two side screens, because of how big they are and they come all the way down to here, are effectively like each door or the window in each door and you get to see a little bit of the, the door as well. So I thought, why not make a headline? So what I've bought is some fake Alcantara material, which actually feels pretty decent for what it is. And Outside of my container, I've got some hardboard and some batten. I'm gonna make like a roof, a headlining to sit across the top of this. Um, and at some point, I'm also gonna do something that comes down and around here. Might not be in this video, but I will be doing it to really, you know, make you feel like you're, you're inside the cabin, inside the car. So when you're racing, you don't see any of this white wall distracting you over your sort of line of sight here. You've just got the world around you, the racetrack you're on, the rally stage you're in, whatever it might be. So that's my plan for today. Um, I may also, if I can, fit the bezel-free kits as well, but I don't know if I've got everything quite yet to do that. But either way, that's the plan, um, and that's what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna see some time lapse or some sped up footage now of me outside, hopefully achieving something that resembles the roof of a car and a, and a headlining. And I'm even gonna fit a little interior light just in the centre here as well, just for that authentic in-car feel.
Well, it kind of looks like a headlining to me. Let's just hope it fits, I was about to say, on the car, but you know what I mean, on the Simric. Yeah, <laughs> it looks pretty sweet from here. It's actually been about a week since I shot me building this headlining or roof uh, for what I'm gonna call my sim racing booth. I've been in sim racing pods and I've been in another one quite recently, that video may or may not be up yet. And pods are of course round. And I was trying to think what could I call what I've created here. So I'm gonna go with sim racing booth. A bit like a photo booth or a DJ booth. It's, a, it's an enclosure, something you get into. Um, so that's what, we're, that's what I'm going to call it. If you can think of a better name, by all means put it in the description, but I'm going to go with Booth for now. So the headlining that you saw me make in that sped up section a second ago actually fitted on perfectly. I didn't have to make any adjustments at all. Now I've purposely left a few inches of overhang uh, either side and at the back as well, because that will allow me to, if I need to, adjust the angle of the, the TVs, these LG OLED C ones, because depending on the position of the cockpit, if it goes in a little bit or out a little bit, um, or my seating position changes drastically, I will need to recalculate the angle of those side screens, uh, and that means I need some play in my headlining here. If I made it so it literally just finished at the very edges, I wouldn't be able to make any adjustments. So in the last week, since finishing this, bringing it upstairs and putting it on here, I've covered the top half with some black, I think it's actually velvet that I bought off of eBay for quite a reasonable price. And I've also used the same material to do a drop down all the way along and round the bottom here. So it is literally a, a full enclosure. Once you're in there, you're in there. You could actually, if you wanted to, have a curtain or something across the back as well if you really wanted to go that extreme. But I think you might get a bit warm inside if you did that. You know, you could even have it sort of flap over from the top and just fall down uh, behind the cockpit here. But yeah, I think it might get a bit warm. So anyway, um, this works incredibly well. When you're in there, and I'll get some GoPro head mounted footage of this to show you a bit later in the video. When you're in there, because you can't see over the TVs anymore, the LG OLED C ones, you can't see the, the window or the walls behind, you can't see anything around the floor, it's super immersive, just like the sim racing pods that I've been in before, but whereas they used projectors, which are inherently a bit washed out, and the blacks are obviously not very black, I've got OLED C1 from LG where the blacks are as black as black can be, and the colors are really vibrant, and the resolution is higher as well. The two sim racing pods that I've been in both ran effectively 1080p per projector. Um, and so for quite large scaling, you know, you can see the pixels if you look for them, and being projectors, they are quite washed out. So the the image quality we have in here looks almost real, you know? High resolution, crank the in-game settings up, it just looks amazing. But what I'm gonna do quickly, grab the camera and just give you a little walk around um, and show you the headlining. I actually had to put a piece of three mil thick aluminium strip along the front edge here because the wood I used bowed a bit too much. It probably sagged about two inches. To be expected, I kind of thought it might happen. Um, but yes, yeah, so I got a strip of aluminium, put that across there, and then the velvet headlining cover at the top that you see, I've just curved round and is fixed underneath. But I'll just grab the camera and give you a little close up. And I'll also show you sort of in here, when I do some proper footage of me racing in a minute, I'll turn these overhead lights off because they are obviously, these are really, really bright, right? If you see them, they're like two suns in the room. Great for shooting video, but um, it obviously washes out what you have in here a little bit. And when I race, I don't have my overhead video recording lights on. I don't have any lights on, bar a little lamp in the corner. And you'll really see just how dark it is in here. And that's good. And I'll tell you why once I'm in here in a minute, but let's have a quick look around first. Yeah, so the top half of this, as I say, it's like a, a velvety material that I got off of eBay. It wasn't very expensive. I'm thinking I paid 
like, I don't know, 30 quid maybe, for enough to do this whole top piece here and all the drop down here that runs all the way around the back of the cockpit. I mean, just, in fact, just putting the camera here, look, on the top of my seat, you can see that pretty much all you see inside there, and this is how it looks in real life as well, it's not camera trickery. Once you're in from the room, all you see is the screens and my, what I'm gonna call <laughs> enormous in-car door speakers, some Yamo Gale Force 25s. If you're a child of the 70s or 80s here in the UK, you probably called them Jamos as I did until I realized it was pronounced Yamo, but they're my in-car speakers. Uh, but yes, you can see literally, you know, if you look up, there's nothing but black headlining, just like there would be in a closed cockpit car. And you've just got this huge sort of 180 to 200 degree field of view around us there. But that's, yeah, that's, I mean, that's basically it. You can see it kind of overhangs the left-hand side here. And if I come over to the other side, again, there's an overhang there. And like I say, that's intentional for me to allow for adjustment uh, the material at the bottom here is just hanging like that for the minute because I've actually got to raise these TVs up again. Um, so all this sort of stuff that's laying there at the moment will be will actually be used. But that's that's how I've done it and that's what it looks like. And I'm super pleased with it. Just tripped over my tripod. Um, yeah, I'm super pleased with how it's come out. At the moment also the three TVs, the LG OLED C1s, have gone into sort of, um, they've dimmed themselves because there's nothing changing on the screen. So. Um, you'll see just how bright they really are in a moment when I get in. One thing I forgot to mention actually is that I have fitted the bezel free kits. Um, you can just about see them. Well, I don't know how well you'll be able to see them, but you, you can see them there and there. And these are something I'm going to talk more about in a separate video. But at the moment, I'm undecided whether they're going to stay or not but we'll see. So at the moment, they're just on there, sort of in a temporary fashion. Oh, and I've just realized I still haven't played around with the anti-aliasing settings to get rid of this ghosting um, that you get in ACC. But anyway, none of that matters. This is about what it's like to drive with three 55 inch LG OLED C1s um, in the, uh, in my sim racing booth, my little self-contained, cool, this is snug, my little self-contained cockpit. So what I'm gonna do, a quick blast in this sort of daylight setting here, and then I'm gonna change to nighttime so that you can see just how effective it is having yourself fully enclosed in this sort of cabin or cockpit style environment even during the day, it's daytime here. If I look out of the booth, look, you can see it's daytime. But in here, we're really well isolated from sort of the room around me. You know, and once you're concentrating on, on the sim that you're in, you really do sort of lose yourself, you know, in the, in the sim, in the game, which is, which is what being immersed is all about, isn't it? It's so much fun. Um, I really couldn't be happier with how this has all turned out. And I've had a few of my friends around and we've spent, we spent like four hours the other night, just me and my mate Andy Kreis, were just taking it in turns, trying to beat each other's lap times and, and position in the race as well. All sorts of different conditions, you know, in the daytime, in the dark, in the wet. It was so much fun. And especially when it's really nighttime here as well, and there's no ambient light coming from the back, um, you know, it's even more immersive. That's why I said if you really wanted to, you could put a, a curtain that runs across the back, you know, to really, really put yourself in there. But yeah, that's a little spin in the daytime setup. Now let's switch to nighttime because one of the things that is particularly good about this, I mean, you can see how dark my face looks here just from and then you get some light from the screens. One of the things that is particularly good about being fully enclosed here is the way the lighting changes dynamically um, based on what's going on 
in the sim. So, just like, there's actually quite a lot of light, annoyingly, coming from the HUD display on the left and the right there. Um, but, yeah, one of the things, so look, look how black, I don't know if this, how this will show up, but that, the black is just ridiculously black, as you would expect for OLED. So this at night time is just an amazing experience. But even now, with it being daylight behind me, you know, it's daytime here, like about 11 o'clock in the morning, when you're in here, in the little sim racing booth, it feels dark, you know. You can, because these monitors, these TVs, finish just sort of parallel 180 degrees, maybe 200 degrees, it's just filling my field of view completely. So I've got a little bit of light from behind, but not much, you know. It really feels like it's night time in here. But yeah, one of the things that happens, so in real life when you're driving a car, the way you are illuminated inside that car is entirely down to the amount of light coming in through your windscreen, your side windows, and your rear windows, if you've got them. So what we've got here, because these screens are so big, at 55 inches, and they provide so much light, as the lighting effects change in the sim, I am illuminated in my little booth, my little cabin here, my cockpit, like I would be in real life. So. Um, a bit like how, how Will at Boosted Media has overhead active lighting in his sim room, because I've enclosed my TVs, these LG OLED C1s, the only light I'm getting is provided, provided by them. So that's a really nice side effect. It's like I have active dynamic lighting in my little sim booth because of it all just coming from the screen. You can see as it changes there, in fact, dark again, and you wait now it's getting light from that uh, floodlight, it's all changing, and I'm, I'm being illuminated, like literally me, um, in real life as a result of the light coming from these TVs as it changes dynamically. It's just such a wicked experience. I am genuinely so, so pleased. So big thanks to LG for, for sending these over, you know, and hopefully this, these three videos have sort of done LG not proud, but made them happy with, you know, with the results. And I've made the sort of the best and most immersive display setup, at least, that you can do with, with you know, TVs in 2021 and, and screens of this size and, and being OLED, you know, we've got the blacks, we've got the vibrance, we've got the response times. It's, honestly, it's just amazing. But let's, let's add some rain into the mix now just as another, just as a final demonstration of how you really feel, you know, like you're there. I often, throughout these videos, have referenced it being similar to, um, to VR. And it is similar to VR, you know, in that you're, you really, if you just forget yourself, you know, for a moment, you really feel like you're in there. My cat. <laughs> My cat just jumped up on the roof. She now likes to sit on top of the, the rig. Going double fire. But yeah, I couldn't be happier with this. Um, I am gonna start a ACC single player career mode. So I'll be sticking up some videos of that as I get into it. And maybe I'll do a live stream as well. Although I do find it very difficult to, to drive and chat at the same time, especially as you know, circuit-based racing is, is totally foreign to me. But I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna have some fun with that because it's just so nice, you know, to play like this. When I normally do Dirt Rally, first of all, Dirt Rally doesn't support triple screens, which is just ridiculous. Um, and secondly, you know, in Rally, there isn't much to see at the sides. You're not being overtaken by other cars. You've just got the stage whizzing past you. So. Whereas here, we, you know, we need to see, look in our mirrors, see what's coming down and come along beside us. And it's just, oh, it's just it's such a good experience. It really is. Car on the right. Clear on the right. You know, and also I've noticed, briefly mentioned Will with Boosted Media a minute ago. I've seen people in the comments on his videos saying, oh, it's the camera angles that make it look so good. You know, um, it's not what it looks like in real life. And whilst there is an element of 
setting the camera up to catch good footage, you know, and make it look good from a content creation point of view, you know, it's very close to that here in real life. You know, when I, this is my field of view, looking from left to right. If I look up, and not where I'm going, I've just got a black headline and there's nothing, I'm not seeing my walls or my window, I'm in the sim. If I look down and around me, I've got the world's biggest door speakers, I've got my steering wheel, my wheelbase, my pedals, my shifter, you know, all the things you would have in a car. So whilst, you know, angling the camera to make it look good from a content creation point of view is definitely a thing. I can see why Will does it and why I'll do it as well, because I want you guys, we want you guys, to have a good, enjoyable experience watching our videos when we do actual driving, which I don't usually do. Um, this is very, very similar to what we actually experience, you know, it's especially with this enclosure that I've made here. I think it makes a huge difference. So if anyone has got large enough TVs or monitors to do this, I absolutely recommend that you do it. I reckon the whole build has cost me well, 75, 80 quid for the wood and the fake Alcantara and the, the other suede material that I bought, uh, suede velvet material. It's, it's no money at all and it's well worth doing. And I'm not paying any attention to what I'm doing on track. So forgive my driving, but we're here to look at the displays and see how immersive it looks. Uh, and that's what we're doing. Oh, my little interior light that I ordered. I think that must be on its way from China because that's not arrived yet either. I didn't actually look on eBay where it was coming from and typically these sort of cheap rechargeable, you know, LED stick on lights, they're bound to be on their way from China, aren't they? Maybe that'll be here in another six weeks, who knows? But anyway, this whole experience is just second to none. And as I've said before, I prefer this to VR just like I did when I was in that sim racing pod at Immersive Display UK, because of how easy it is to hop in and out with your mates. You haven't got to adjust IPDs, you haven't got to adjust head straps, you haven't got to reset the seated position because your mate is five foot and you're six foot five. You just hop in, you switch over, and you're good to go, you know? It makes so, so much easier. Um, and also, I've got a sofa sat behind me there so we can sit behind, watch each other race and have a beer whilst we're taking it in turns. So this is my personal preference for how I like to sim race. Um, obviously other people will like VR more, it's entirely up to you and you know that's that's totally fine. We each prefer different things. I actually preferred single screen for a long time because I'd only been in poorly set up triple screen setups where people hadn't done the trigonometry to calculate the correct angles based on their screen size and their viewing distance, and everything just looked a little bit warped and a little bit messy. Um, once you've been on a good triple setup that's been correctly set up with the right field of view, again, based on those calculations, because you can't just choose a field of view that you like. If you want everything to be one-to-one -one scale with real life and geometrically correct, so by that I mean that wing mirror there looks the correct size it should do if I was sat in this uh, M4 in real life as does that wing mirror over there and as does that car that I'm now facing. You know, once you've got all that right, the experience is just incredible. Now I realize I look quite dark here, so let's just come out of this and get something lighter on the screen to illuminate me a little bit more. Um, and then we'll do the outro. Yeah, there we go. So in fact, look, you can see just how much I'm lit up now just from the screen changing from that dark night, night scene to the menu system. I've still got my foot on the brake. To this menu system. See, that's, that's what it feels like. It's like you, you pull over, you put it into neutral, you set your foot on the brake because you don't want the car to roll away. I'm not even in the race anymore. Um, but yeah, so these are all, you know, this lighting changing is just an added bonus, a side effect of how big the screens are and being enclosed. So hopefully this video has come out well and shows you the experience that I'm getting and what you guys can get too. Whether you go with LG OLEDs or whether you use whatever you've currently got, it doesn't matter. If you can put a roof over and, and you know some drop downs around the bottom to really enclose you in your own little sim racing booth, then I really think you should because it makes a massive difference. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. There will be links to the LG OLED C1s in the description. 
both uh, Amazon and LG links as well if you want to check you know, pricing and availability in your own country. And a big thanks to LG for sponsoring these three videos. I will be enjoying these um, LG OLED C1s for a very, very long time. As always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.